A week ago, a video was published by someone on YouTube that featured me doing a hippie dancey Aikido thing. It also claims that it is my third degree black belt exam, to which there is truth, but there is also a lot of missing information here. I figured it's a great opportunity not only to address what that video is really about, but also to share something with my haters that I've been meaning to share for a while. First of all, that video is being used as quote unquote proof that my Aikido is inadequate. In the description of the video, it says, this video demonstrates that Rokas' Aikido is nothing close to a fur dan level and that his opinions on Aikido are based on a very low level of understanding of the art. There's something here which I see done by many of the people that don't like me. It is the practice of a logical fallacy known as ad hominem. This fallacy occurs when instead of addressing someone's argument or position, you irrelevantly attack the person or some aspect of the person who is making the argument. In other words, the person who posted this video neglects to bring up any quotes or specific arguments that I've made. Instead, they took a small snippet of information, in this case a video, took it out of context and then used it as quote unquote proof that everything that I've been saying is wrong. Just because I did a hippie dancey Aikido thing, which I will explain what it is really about in a moment. I faced the same ad hominem logical fallacy just a few weeks ago, when I published my challenge to a number of martial arts to prove that their martial arts are functional. Some people made statements that I do not have enough years of experience in BJJ, MMA, and combat sports to judge what is functional in martial arts and not. When taking a close look, this argument is simply not true. And the following question explains why. Does every sports analyst need to have been a professional player? The answer is no. Either the person makes good arguments, or they don't. But if what they are saying is true or not, is not decided based on how many years they've been a professional player, or how they performed in the sport, if they did the sport at all. Instead, the quality of their judgment is assessed in the quality and content of their arguments. Of course, education and years of experience can benefit your quality of arguments. But having years of experience in a practice does not necessarily save you from bad arguments either. A great example is the infamous video of Anderson Silva teaching knife defense. The knife defense that Silva is teaching here is delusional. Some would say though, but Anderson Silva is one of the greatest fighters of all time. He surely must be able to distinguish what's effective or not. But unfortunately, that's not how things work. You can be the best athlete in a sport and have poor judgment skills when it comes to theory. Same as a coach can be a poor athlete, but amazing at judging and assessing the theory. I am not claiming, nor did I ever claim that I was an amazing Aikidoka, but I did train it for 15 years with a variety of instructors. More importantly, I've spent the last five years trying to figure out what makes a martial art functional and analyzed various practices, including my own. The arguments that I came up with through the analysis is what I like to and should be judged on. In fact, I will be more than happy if somebody will prove me wrong by debunking some of the arguments that I've made. I will also be glad to admit that I was wrong if I will be proven to be so. But just because I did a hippie dancey Aikido thing years ago does not naturally disprove all of the arguments that I've made. In fact, it is more likely than not that it is a last ditch effort made by an Aikido practitioner who is not able to make any sensible arguments. Instead, they try to demean me, to prevent themselves from engaging in a rational or logical discussion or exploration where they could actually be proven wrong. And to give some context to the hippie dancey Aikido thing, yes, that was part of the practice I did with my instructor, but it wasn't all that bad of a practice. In fact, I used to love that part of the training. It was an exercise used to develop self-expression, freedom in movement, mobility, flexibility, and ability to blend. But that was just part of the training that I did. I also trained the regular Aikido stuff all the time. And this demonstration was just a small part of what I learned. Nothing more, nothing less. Just because I did a hippie dancey Aikido thing, does that naturally disregard everything else that I learned or said? I don't think so. If you're interested to see how I reassess my opinion about Aikido after receiving contributions from my online challenge, click here. Thank you for watching, and as always, I wish you to own your journey.